sınır şey, sınıra en yakın şehir diyebiliriz. Özellikle e, Lviv'le arasını gösterce şöyle göstereyim. Burası Lviv, Çet. E, Ukrayna'nın en büyük ikinci şehri. Burası da Jeshov. E, sınır da tam olarak burada olduğu için e, yani sınırı geçmek istedikleri zaman Polonya'ya en çok kullanılan sınır burasıdır. O yüzden Tom'a bağlandım. Sormak istiyorum. Ee, arası bayağı yakın. How many kilometers is it between uh, Jeshov and Lvov? About 70. 70, 70 kilometre. To the border. I don't know. To, exactly. to the border. Yes. Sınıra kadar yeah. 70 kilometre. Bayağı yakın yani. Uh, so, what did you experience so far? Uh, do you have any... Uh, people fleeing into your direction into Jeshov uh, obviously there are Ukrainian people working in Jeshov in uh, Poland yeah of, yeah of course there are Ukrainian people uh, in Jeshov there's there's a lot of people actually from Ukraine that live in Poland there's about two million Ukrainians two million. living in Poland right now yeah okay do they, do they have like a are they free to travel in Schengen as well or is it just Poland if If you have a residency permit in Poland, yeah, uh, you can travel freely in Schengen. So you you can basically count them as uh, part EU citizens. Well, partially citizenship is is is a complex. I mean, uh, not not citizens, idea. but you know, partially. Uh, you know, they, they, they have can... the benefits. If they have a uh, residency in Poland, they can move around freely in Europe like any EU citizen. And you see two million. Let me let me translate that. Uh, yeah. Tom Tom diyor ki iki milyona yakın uh, Polonyalı insan, uh, şey Ukraynalı insan Polonya'da yaşıyor ve çalışıyor. Uh, o yüzden. Bu insanlar e, zaten bir kısmı Polonya'daydı ama tabi ailesi olan var. What about their families? Can they uh, bring their families with them if they if they choose to? Okay, so if if you have uh, a residence permit in Poland, you can uh, speed up the process for your family. If it's immediate family like a spouse or children, yeah. As far as I know, it's it's pretty much instant. They can come over at any time. What about today? Uh, today is a special day. It's it's, it's like a it's it's it's, it's probably. So, what did your government uh, say about this issue? That, that uh, will you accept? Will Poland accept uh, immigrants at this point? At this point, it's um, it's a controversial issue whether immigrants will be accepted. But it's definitely a, a lot of politicians are leaning for accepting Ukrainian immigrants. Uh, there was a lot of controversy a few months ago with. The is there is there an official fellow. response to that? At this point, honestly, I I can't say because from what I've seen, it's um, mixed messages. Most of the news I was looking at today was international, mm -hmm. so I, I really <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what the official government stance is on accepting uh, Ukrainian uh, refugees or migrants. Mm -hmm the the main thing that i can say with certainty though is uh the government is aware that there's going to be an influx of people yeah there are more like uh border control guards working uh to process these people to let people across the border uh, but as far as like is there like uh planned actions as f i don't really know you don't know i saw There's, there is no official official response to that. Let me let me translate that. Uh, diyor ki yani şu anda diyor e, Polonya Ukrayna'dan Polonya'ya gelenler konusunda farklı politikacılar farklı şeyler söylüyor. Ama zaten e, Ukraynalıların e, arasında çok fazla yani 2 milyon dedi. Çok fazla insanın e, tabii ki e, Polonya'da çalışma izni veya oturma izni olduğu için onlar diyor yakın ailelerini birinci dereceden akrabalarını getirebiliyor. Ama e, şu anda Hani bizim tarafımızdan e, resmi bir hani Ukraynalılar gelebilir. Çünkü baktığınız zaman e, Schengen'e, Avrupa'ya olan bir kapı burası. Yani sadece savaştan kaçmış olmuyorsun. Aynı zamanda Avrupa'ya kapak dağıtmış oluyorsun. E, o sebepten hani e, Polonya'nın da çok kolay alabileceği bir e, şey değil. E, karar değil bu. So um, uh, what, what, what have you seen so far? What's been happening in Jashov? Uh. So, uh, I I used to work in aerospace and now I do uh, consulting for one company in Mielec. 
Um, Mielitz is one of the places where the U.S. Army has set up its base. Yeah. So basically, I drive by that airport twice a week, and uh, there's about I don't know 50 like tents that are maybe like five meters wide and 20, 30 meters long, set up uh, for like U.S. military to set operations up from there. Mm -hmm. uh, on the secondary runway, they have about, I don't know, 40 helicopters lined up. <laughs> You've seen them yourself? Oh, yeah, yeah. I uh, see them, like I said, twice a week. I drive by. It's been like this for the past two, three weeks. So uh, the U.S. military is uh, ready to be operational, so to speak, at the border? Uh, not at the border, but Mielitz is about 100 kilometers away from the Ukrainian border. Mm -hmm. A similar situation is near Zeshov's airport. There's also uh, like a temporary U.S. base set up there. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, in G2A Arena is oh, where shit. They're, they're they're like uh, they're living. <laughs> they're living <laughs> like in there. Where... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit, man. Okay. <laughs> uh, biz uh, Tom'la şeyden tanışıyoruz. G2A'da çalıştığım dönemden tanışıyoruz. Tom aslında uh, makine mühendisi ve e, Jeshov'da ve bölgesinde e, şey var e, jet motoru falan üretiliyor baya e, taşaklı bir bölge havacılık konusunda oraya yakın ufak bir şehirde de Tom e, bir tane havacılık e, şirketine üretim yapan şirkete consulting verdiği için o bölgeden çok geçtiği için e, helikopterleri e, işte kuruluma hazır Amerikan mühimmatlarını e, vesaireleri görmüş çok ve şu an Amerikan askerleri bizim eskiden çalıştığımız şirketin e, bir e, konferans bölgesi var orada yaşıyorlarmış bildiğin e, onu anlatıyor şimdi bana yani aslında Amerikan askerleri NATO askerleri vesaire e, şu an aktif bir şekilde Polonya'da bekliyorlar Polonya'da hazırlar yani e, consulting'i şu an çevirdik ya işte işte danışmanlık veriyormuş Öyle diyelim. Uh, so, uh, have have you seen uh, growth in population in in Jeshov today? Like, uh, have you, were you aware of the traffic jams or or anything? Or are you panicked as as Polish people, or is it is it Ukrainian people uh, flowing into Polish territory? Uh, I uh, personally, I'm not panicked. I I don't see. Uh, I mean. I, I don't find the whole situation comforting or anything like that. I, I do see uh, that this is a dangerous situation for the whole world. But personally, I'm not, you know, going out to the supermarket and panic buying yet. <laughs> is there people that are that are panic, like going to the supermarket buying I, noodles I think and so. shit? Like, I, I, I saw people, like, like, I saw lots of cars in front of supermarkets, like, more than I would expect to see on, like, uh, Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it seemed like the parking lots in front of supermarkets were packed. Uh, I sent you a picture earlier. Yeah. Uh, uh, pretty much every gas station uh, I, I passed today, there's lines. Uh, still, there are lines. I, I was coming home at around like 9 p.m. and there were lines. Do you think th those are Polish people or, or, or Ukrainian people living in Poland? I think... I think it's mostly Polish people. Uh, I I think people are panicking because the price of oil spiked to uh, over 100 USD a barrel today. Yeah, uh, hasn't been that high in years. <laughs> it's it's not uh, fear. It's it's not about the fear of uh, Russia attacking. It's rather oil prices. I think people are a bit afraid of oil availability. Availability. Okay. Uh huh. A lot of a lot of the uh, hydrocarbon fuel that's available in Europe it, it comes out of Russia, and uh, a lot of people are talking about maybe letting Iran back into like uh, out of some sanctions and back into the global uh, oil market. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think mostly people are afraid of uh, like skyrocketing prices because today. Uh, the price of fuel went up from five zlot and like twenty groshe to almost six. Okay. So almost like. Let me let me 20%. let me let me translate that. Uh, şimdi diyor ki Polonya'da 
e, Rusya'nın saldırısına karşı bir korku yok ama e, çoğu e, bizim burada diyor benzini vesaire diyor biz Rusya'dan alırız. O yüzden diyor 5.40 zloty'den bugün 6 zloty'ye yükseldi benzin fiyatı. İnsanlar benzin fiyatının daha yüksek olacağını ve benzin kuyruklarının oluşacağını ve benzin konusunda ulaşamayacağımızı düşündükleri için diyor çok fazla diyor benzin kuyrukları oluştu. Hani benzinin fiyatının yükselmesi de değil benzin yokluğu çekeceğimizden korkuyorlar diyor. O sebepten bazı insanlar şeyi konuşmaya başladı. Hani İran'ı da salalım da İran belki bize hani benzin gönderir. Yani İran'daki şeyleri biraz kaldıralım. The chat is asking uh, is it your first time bro? <laughs> Because we are used to um, long queues um, in front of gas stations in Turkey because uh, we get those um, rises in uh, oil prices basically weekly, daily sometimes, couple of times per week. So uh, we're, we're pretty much used to it. Uh, I've seen Turkey. queues before. Like I remember at the beginning of the pandemic uh, like That was something different, though. That was completely different, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But people also, it was a similar situation where there were uh, like hour-long lines waiting for fuel. Yeah, like, pandemi normally, başında da gördük diyor buna benzer şeyleri. Like, normally, when I, I go to get fuel, especially if it's like in the evening, there's like maybe one or two other cars at, at a fuel station, unless I'm like somewhere in the center of the city. Yeah. But on the outskirts, it's it's unheard of to be waiting, I don't know, half an hour to refuel your car. Yeah. Let me ask you one last question. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the people's opinion in Poland uh, regarding Ukraine and Russia? I know that you don't like Russia basically in Poland because uh, you've been basically under Soviet pressure a lot in the past but uh you don't specifically like poland uh, ukraine either as far as i'm concerned uh there is like uh like as far as i as far as i know there is a lot of people who concern uh who, who think ukraine as a part of poland as well uh i know you're not one of them but uh, what's what's the main um uh, idea about the situation in poland well it's it's divided it it's really divided. is uh, yeah there there are lots of people like i don't think anyone in general is uh cheering on putin saying you know keep going but a lot of people are saying that the current situation is more of like a, a show of force uh basically putin wants to annex like those two eastern oblasts uh of ukraine and that's where it's going to end maybe install a puppet government, maybe, you know, take a bit more. But nobody, I would say the majority of people don't believe that Ukraine is going to collapse as a country. Uh, I would say even fewer people believe that Putin will keep going, maybe into other uh, Baltic states or into Poland. Uh, that's, I would say a very small minority believes that. Uh, We're gonna have to see what happens in the next few days, but right now, uh, most people aren't super happy about the situation. There is some, like, there's this general feeling of uneasiness. General feeling of uneasiness. Okay, yeah. thank you. What, what do you think, personally? Is Putin gonna annex uh, those territories or the whole of Ukraine? Or is, is he gonna install a puppet government? What, what do you think? I, I think... Uh, You know, Putin has uh, his own personal beliefs. Uh, he's made this pretty clear in the past, what he thinks about uh, rebuilding past Soviet glory or a new Russian empire. Uh, I believe Putin would personally want to uh, acquire all of Ukraine, uh, along with probably parts of Finland, uh, some Baltic states, probably... Uh, all of Belarus. Uh, Belarus now is a puppet state of Russia. Belarus is more or less a puppet yeah. state. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but personally, I, I I don't think it's going to go that far. I I think right now, uh, Russia's playing a very dangerous game in terms of their own uh, economic situation. I know that China has made it quite obvious that they're going to support them and make 
finances available to them, give them loans and things like this. But I really do think that the pressure is going to like make it's going to make Putin play a big game, and then it's going to have like this effect on the world where he's going to say we're backing out, but we're taking this anyways. Yeah. Uh, like I feel like it's going to be like a repeat of 2014. Because in 2014, people were saying the same thing, that they're going to go all the way to Kiev, and there was fighting in Kiev. Yeah. Uh, but, again, it, it stopped with Crimea, and I think it's going to be very similar. Maybe some territory of northern Ukraine will be absorbed by Belarus, something like this. Uh, I definitely think there's going to be some treaties after this whole conflict, some redrawing of borders. Uh, I think some of those borders are going to be... Uh, in dispute um I, I believe the same i i i think that he, he's gonna take what he can and then uh and be calm again that's what i think yeah anyways thank you thank you tom uh i cannot no continue this <laughs> stream in english so uh thanks for the info thanks for uh relaying to us what you have experienced so far sure i'll, I'll talk to you again later man okay See you. What, what do I do? See you. So, well, you got you gotta leave yourself. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't, don't want to keep. I'm gonna go eat now. <laughs> go eat, bro. Go go All eat right. some. Uh, fuck. What was this? What was it called? Uh, Cabanos from. Uh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, Orlan. Orlan. Yeah. Yeah. With with yeah. Teshon Smionski. Shit, man. I missed that shit. Talk to you later, man. Thanks. All right. Bye. Yeah. Vay vay vay vay vay Tom'dan bilgiler geldi e, Tom diyor ki biz diyor e, Polonya'da genel bir gerginlik var diyor Çok özledim bu arada oranın sos istisini ya Teşon Mioski Cabanos from Orland Shit Cabanos güzelmiş lan boşa yaşıyoruz <gülüyor> Evet ya yani diyor ki e, Biz diyor e, çok diyor Polonya'da korkmuyoruz ama hani hissettiğimiz şey de böyledir Agam diyor. Ee, biraz gerginlik var diyor. Ee, ama sonuç itibariyle bizim de diyor e, sınırlarımızdan gelenler olacak. Şimdi tabi Polonya o konuda şey e, Avrupa'nın sınırını tutan ülke olacak baktığınız zaman. Bu mülteci dalgası eğer olursa eğer bu iş uzarsa. Ee, bakalım nasıl davranacaklar Polonya, Macaristan, Romanya bunların tutumları çok şey olacak. E şimdi e, klasik bir Arap ülkesinden de bahsetmiyoruz. Sonuçta bunlar e, Hristiyan e, görece Avrupalı e, bir millet Ukraynalılar. Bakalım ne olacak? Evet Erlik burada mı? Bixi burada mı? Mikrofonları kapat.